Okay, here's part two of our text-to-path video in CorelDRAW. This time I'm going to very quickly review what we did last time. Uh, we ended up pretty much where you see right now. We've taken straight text and we snapped it onto this curve. Um, then we showed you how to click twice and adjust the size of that text if you wanted to do that. And also by clicking on the ellipse we have here we can also change the shape of the ellipse and let that text follow that shape. Um, so that's kind of a review of where we got last time. If you didn't see that video, it would be a good time to go back and watch that one first. Now, this time what we're going to do is we're going to go one step further here. And we've got our text on our path here, which is an ellipse. And this time I'm going to show you a little bit more what you can do with it. Right now it's just on the top of the path or the top of this ellipse and that may not be where we need it so we're going to cover two things we're going to move it around on the ellipse and we're also going to reverse it so that it arches the opposite direction so the first thing we're going to do is we can just click on our text to path object here um, you can click on either one of them um, you'll know when you have it because it'll say text to path down here and you also see a red box beside the first letter of your text here and the red box is the key to moving this what we're going to do here is we can go over on this red box and we can move this text out away from our curve. It does not change the shape of our curve any. It just moves it away. So that's the first thing I want to show you. So you can move it away and um, you'll notice there in blue it tells you how far you're moving it away. And the other thing I want to show you is this text will, when you get it back centered, over that ellipse or over the center mark of that ellipse you'll see a red line appear in the middle and then you know that that's centered so that's kind of key because when you start moving that you can move it around the ellipse too as you notice you can put it inside the ellipse you can put it upside down on the bottom of the ellipse like that or just simply slide it around anywhere you want it on that ellipse and if you want it back centered then we just need to come back up here wait for our red line and release and we've got it. So that shows us how we can move it away from the ellipse, we can move it inside the ellipse, we can move it around the ellipse because maybe we don't want it centered over the top. So that's the first thing I want to show you. The second thing is using what we just learned there we can also make this lettering follow the, the curve the opposite direction and the easiest way while this is selected is we can go up here and use our mirroring functions and I'm going to mirror it horizontally and vertically and so now it's kind of upside down and backwards and we can just grab that that red handle again and we can drag it around here and we can put it right here on the bottom of this ellipse so now we have it centered over the bottom of this the top of its touching if we wanted it on the inside we can just click on it and go into our baseline of the text is on the line it's now inside that ellipse so there we've learned we, how we can move it around the ellipse um, we can also just simply by mirroring it we can have it basically go the reverse direction around the ellipse the other way which would be the bottom half of a circle or counterclockwise arching several different terms that um, people could use for that. Now the last thing I want to show you is once we have this text where we would want it we can get rid of this circle. Now there's two things to remember. If you get rid of the circle then you're done. There's no more editing to go. So there's two options you really have. The first thing is we gotta select just the circle not the text. So we're gonna click on the circle the first time. Remember it's text to path object. The second time you click you're gonna have the control ellipse. Now one way to hide this so we could do future editing would be simply just come over here to our let's say our line tool will do it this way and we'll say no outline. Click right there, no outline. The ellipse is still there, but it has no line, no outline value and it has no fill value, so we're not going to see it. So that would be the first way that we could do it. The other way would be when we would highlight it would be just to actually delete it. So now I've got it selected again and I'll go ahead and make that outline. Let's make it red so we can see it. Um, and I just right clicked on red when I have that ellipse selected and that will change the outline property to red. So now that we have it selected that way, let's suppose we just want to get rid of it. 
we could just as easily, once it's selected, go here and we could either hit the delete key or right click and come up here and hit delete. Now it's gone. Now there's no more editing, unless we would undo that, there's no more editing that can be done to that text. It's now following that curve, but since there's no curve to follow, there's no way to edit it. If we click on this, you'll see it's just artistic text. It's not on the curve anymore. There's no more running it around the curve or anything like that. You're pretty much set right where it is. So you want to make sure you've got it where it is. Um, possibly hide your outline of your object that you've got it pathing to so that you can do some future editing. So just keep that in mind. So there's three things that we've learned. New about the text to path, reversing direction, moving it away from the curve, moving it around the curve and then getting rid of the curve so that we can continue on. So the next video we're going to cover practical application of using this. We'll put a logo in there and we'll put some text with it. So hopefully you got something out of that video and we'll see you in the next one.